What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video today. And in this video, we are doing the 32nd installment of Random Model Airports. Today, we're gonna to be doing the Palm Springs International Airport. Thank you to Red River Aviation for suggesting this on an Instagram poll that I did last week. Because of my lighting situation for the Oklahoma City diorama, I figured I would just skip Oklahoma City this month and I'll try to figure out something else for the future of Oklahoma City as a whole. Because my initial plan is I don't necessarily want to discontinue it, but if I can't find a better place to put it where there's good lighting, then I unfortunately may have to... Uh, discontinue it and try to figure out something else. So for now, we just have a second random model airport update this month and hopefully I'll be able to find any more permanent airports if you do have any suggestions for a permanent airport that I could do, um, perhaps something maybe in the Midwest. I'm, I am open to doing airports in other parts of the country though, um, just so that way there's some variety on the channel and all that fun stuff. So again, if you have any suggestions for both a, random, a new random model airport that I could do in the future and for a new permanent airport that I could do to potentially replace Oklahoma City, let me know in the comments. And again, that is not an official decision. I'm still trying to figure out what to do best with the Oklahoma City diorama. Um, I definitely don't want to discontinue it. It's only been up for about a year at this point, but certainly I do think that if I have to discontinue it, then I will. Um, it's just kind of unfortunate with the situation that I was in, given the whole uh, reorganization that took place, which prompted the table to be put in a not so good lighting area in the room. So here we go for Palm Springs International Airport. I don't have too much written down for the history, but I do have a couple of points that I'll kind of go over here. So the airport started out as a U.S. Army Air Corps emergency landing field in the 1930s, which I found kind of, kind of fascinating to read up on. The first known air service in the area was for Palm Springs Airlines, and they operated the Ford Trimotor aircraft. I'll go and pop up a photo on your screen of what one looks like, because I know not very many people know what a Ford Trimotor looks like, or even what one is to begin with, um, but I know there's probably a few that do, but there's that picture for you. So later on, air service continued to grow out of the city and some of the first jet service, like the true jet, fan jet stuff, some were some of the American 707s in the 1960s, of which I do have a model of, and I could definitely do that if I wanted to do a retro PSP. Um, not the PlayStation Portable, but the uh, airport code, code for Palm Springs. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, like I was saying, the first American 707 um, was the first fan jet service in the 60s. Now, the largest aircraft to ever operate here on regularly scheduled service was the DC-10, and that was scheduled here in the 1970s, so that was really awesome to see um, such an iconic plane with an iconic livery, and I really hope to find one of those at some point, but I know they're very hard to find, and they are very rare. Airport has gone through a couple of phases of rapid expansion throughout the 90s and 2000s, and even in 2010, uh, WestJet Airlines began service here that year, which you can kind of see up to about the right center of your screen. And then as the pandemic hit, obviously a lot of airports saw a big downturn in passenger travel and all those numbers because nobody really wanted to travel in an era where there's a virus going around. So that's what prevented a lot of people from traveling. But Palm Springs did cease a record-breaking growth phase, and they have certainly been doing that as they've got a huge presence of various airlines. they got a lot of diverse stuff as well. Now, there are some stuff uh, that Palm Springs gets that I do not have in my collection. I'll just, I'll just go ahead and throw those out right now before anybody asks. Um, they do get Air Canada 737 MAX 8s, and they also get Air Canada Rouge on an Airbus A319. They also get Flare Airlines on the 737 MAX, which I believe is a seasonal service. I did not see it on the flight schedule, so I imagine it only operates on certain days of the week or maybe um, only operates in um, summer months. And also WestJet, they do operate the 737-800 and the MAX 8 I did see on the flight board. Um, I don't have either one of those, but I do have the 737-700, which I'll be using in this update. So I'll be sure to get some of those models in the future so I can do some more diverse stuff for random model airports. But here we go. Let's go ahead and hop into the update. So I'll just kind of go over the uh, basic um, layout of the Palm Springs Airport because it is it is kind of a bit unique in a way. So you have like the main terminal building right here where you see all the planes parked, which you've been looking at for the last couple of minutes now. And they kind of have like this open area. I'll go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. Um, you can kind of see this is where like a big open area would be. I'll go ahead and pull up something from Google Earth and I'll pop it up on your screen so you know what that looks like. But it's kind of like an open area basically after the main um, terminal building where you check in and, you know, get, get settled in for your flight and all that stuff. So I imagine this stuff is past security uh, when you clear that checkpoint. 
And then if you kind of go down over here, uh, right where my knee is at, and then right here is kind of like the secondary terminal building. I believe this used to be called the domestic terminal, and then this was like the international terminal, but um, not very many international flights apart from the uh, WestJet near Canada and the uh, flare stuff up to Canada. So yeah, that's kind of the whole layout here. We'll go ahead, finally, get into the airport updates. We'll go ahead and get started. We're right over here at gate number four with this American Airlines Boeing 737-800 wearing the logo on the wingless. This is the NG model release from this year. This aircraft arrived ride in on a service from Dallas, flight 2643, which arrived in at 9.44 a.m. ahead of a scheduled 10 a.m. arrival. Parked up at gate 6, we have this Delta Airbus A320. This aircraft arrived in on a service from Minneapolis, flight 2521. And another thing I do want to note here is that some of these flights do not have exact arrival times. Um, for some reason, Flight Radar has glitched out on some of these flights for Thursday, November 17th at Palm Springs. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, but I put these flights in here because when I did check the flight tracker and the route of these planes, they did arrive into Palm Springs. So I imagine it's just some type of glitch within the Flight Radar 24 system that just said that the aircraft did not arrive or just couldn't figure out when it arrived so but it did arrive and its scheduled arrival was supposed to be 12 47 p.m but i imagine it landed somewhere around that time first time i've had to use this model in a, quite a while here i think the last time i used it was gosh i'm trying to think i think fort myers um when i did fort myers as a random model airport make sure to go check that out but i think that was the last time that i had to use this west Chet 737 but yeah, so that's kind of why my WestJet fleet isn't as big as some would like for it to be, especially if I'm doing this kind of an airport, but I'll be sure to get some more WestJet stuff. I think they're kind of hard to find, though, so maybe a little bit difficult, but right here at gate number 8, we have this WestJet 737-700. This aircraft arrived in on service from Calgary, Canada, flight 1468, arriving in at 12.47 p.m., delayed from a 12.08 p.m. scheduled arrival time, so you're looking at a little under 40 minutes of a delay for this aircraft. I think this is the first time I've had to use this model in an airport update, which is awesome. I'm finally happy that I get to use one of these things. But right here at gate number 10, we have this Alaska Embraer 175 operated by SkyWest. So this was released in March or April of this year. I know it was released around the late winter, early spring months, and I was super happy to see this. I didn't get this initially, but I picked it up at the Airliners International 2022 convention in Chicago. Make sure you go check out all the content that I have from that. There's still some content coming out periodically from Red River Aviation. I know he's still working on getting all the trip content posted from that. So I will continue to add that to my community playlist, which I still have going. There's about on a little under 30 videos or so in there but there's all sorts of content from not just me but from all the other community members so make sure to go check that out i'll have that linked in the description but this aircraft right here this alaska Embraer 175 arrived in from san jose california operated by sky west as i said on flight 3431 this arrived in at 9 27 p.m ahead of a scheduled 9 48 p.m arrival if you're a frequent viewer of my channel you may recognize this logo fairly well but right here at gate number 11 we have the Sun Country 737-800 in the blue livery. This aircraft arrived in on a service from Minneapolis, once again with an unknown arrival time, but its scheduled arrival time is 5.26 p.m. So this is 809 Sierra Yankee, a 737-8Q8, so this is one of these least um, 737s. And like I've said in a um, previous video of mine, Sun Country does have a couple of their 737s painted with a 40 years of flight decal, which I'm still waiting to go see at some point. And I don't know if they're going to be doing something special, if they're going to have like a fully uh, painted retro plane or whatever. Um, I'm not sure what they're going to do with that at this point, but it's hard to say. But it would be really cool if they could do something like that for their 40th anniversary, because I know their uh, first flight was from Las Vegas to Sioux Falls, so that's going to be very applicable for retro FSD, and I'm kind of excited to get into that era when I do. So hopefully somebody like Aero Classics will make that Sun Country 727 first livery. Back to a more propped up shot here because it's kind of getting a bit uncomfortable trying to get into that position uh, to get a good shot of the aircraft. But parked right here at gate number 9, we have the Southwest 737-700 in the Canyon Blue livery. This aircraft are right in on a service from Denver, flight 1826. Again, with an unknown arrival time, but its scheduled arrival was 4.05 p.m. Again, with all the flights that have these unknown arrival times, they did arrive into Palm Springs, so it's just probably a matter of the flight radar system glitching and not properly recording the arrival time for some of these aircraft. At gate 7, we have the Southwest 737-700 in the Hart livery with blended winglets. This aircraft arrived in on a service from Oakland, California, flight 497, at 9.48 p.m. delay from a 9.35 p.m. scheduled arrival, so just a 13-minute delay for this aircraft. And I did see that Air Canada's 737 MAX 8 services do park here at this gate, but the Southwest here, I saw gate 7, so I just kind of put this in as filler. Since, obviously, I do not have an Air Canada 737 MAX 8, so I'll be sure to add one of those into my collection at some point. 
And that is everything we have here at this main terminal building, whatever you want to call it. Not like Concourse A or Terminal A or anything like that. This is just kind of like the the main building, if you will, if you want to call it that. But we'll go and move on over to the secondary facility, facility, which is just right over here. And you can kind of see we've got a small handful of aircraft to take a look at. All the gates here at this secondary facility do not have jet bridges, so that's why you don't see anything. And what's kind of unique about some of these gates is that they're so far away. I mean, like, look at this gate. This is like... I don't know how much that would be in the uh, real world in terms of feet, but this is at least a couple of inches in 1 to 400 scale. Some of this stuff is not to scale because I only have so much space because just off to my right is my chair for my desk, and I don't want my chair to run over some of these models, so I kind of have to cut down on some distances just to make sure everything stays within a smaller confined space. But we're going to go ahead and start off here at gate 15 with this Delta Airbus A220-100. I know Gemini just released another one of those, and this is not the newer release, as you can tell, by the Herpa landing gear, because I believe this is the Herpa mold. I'll be sure to get an A220-300 if they do it on the newer mold. I've been hoping that they would do one at some point, and hopefully that's in their plan in the future. I think by the time this video comes out, the Gemini Jets will have announced the December 2022 releases, so I'll be sure to get one of those Delta A220-300s if they did release one, but if not, no worries, I'll be patient. What I won't be patient with, though, is a Delta Connection number 175. But anyways, this aircraft arrived in on a service from Seattle, flight 2171, arriving in at 1.52 p.m., head of a scheduled 2.06 p.m. arrival. Parked at gate 17, we have this American Eagle CRJ-700. This aircraft arrived in on a service from Phoenix, flight 3085, operated by SkyWest, at 9.01 p.m., ahead of a scheduled 9.23 p.m. arrival. Got a nice lineup of United Aircraft there in the background, but the star of the show here at the secondary facility, right here at gate 18, we have this United 737 MAX 9. Now, on Thursday, November 17th, this aircraft was operated by a regular 737-900, but on Friday, which is the, the day that I'm recording this, the 18th, I did see a MAX 9 on the service. So, this aircraft touched down at 11.35 a.m., delayed from an 11.13 a.m. scheduled arrival, so just over 20 minutes of a delay for this particular aircraft. So, seems like it's one of those things where they just swap it out every now and then for a max as opposed to a regular 737-900 or something like that. So I figured I'd throw this in here because why not? I don't really have a Continental Globe 739 and I don't want to use my Evo Blue too much. Part to gate 19, we have this United Express CRJ200 in the Evo Blue livery. This aircraft arrived in on a service from San Francisco, flight 5703, operated by SkyWest, at 5.48 p.m. ahead of a scheduled 6.05 p.m. arrival. Lastly, for the planes at the terminal here at gate 20, we have this United Express CRJ-700. This aircraft arrived in on a service from Denver, flight 5577, also operated by SkyWest, arriving at 9.22 a.m. ahead of a scheduled 9.27 a.m. arrival. Got two more aircraft to take a look at, which are just off in the distance over here. You can kind of see them just taxiing out for departure, so go ahead and take a look at those. First up, we have this JetBlue Airbus A320. This one is wearing the high-rise tail, which you can see right here. I think this is the first time that I've used this model in an airport update as well. Super happy to pick this up at the Airliners International 2022 convention in Chicago. This aircraft is going to be heading out to New York John F. Kennedy today, flight 2050. This departed at 11.06 p.m. delayed from a 9.59 p.m. scheduled departure time. So over an hour of a delay for this particular aircraft. So not sure what happened with this flight. And finally, to round out the update, we have this Allegiant Airbus A319 that's going to be heading out to Bellingham. Washington today, flight 278. This departed at 7.08 p.m., delayed from a 6.37 p.m. departure time, so that's just only 31 minutes of a delay for this aircraft. And that will do it for this random model airport update here at the Palm Springs International Airport. So again, thank you to Red River Aviation for suggesting this random model airport. I know it's kind of interesting for me to do two random model airports where there should be an Oklahoma City airport update in its place, but because of the poor lighting situation, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I figured probably shouldn't do it just so I don't have to go through the pain of having to edit the video again and try to brighten it up so that's a little bit easier for you guys to watch. So that was just kind of my idea for that. But hopefully this random model airport update suits you guys well. And if you do have any suggestions for both a new random model airport for next month and also for a new permanent airport that I could do to potentially replace Oklahoma City, please let me know in the comments. So again, this is not an official decision as to uh, Oklahoma City being replaced or not. Um, that will be made at a later date and I'll be sure to post announcements when I do come to a final decision on that matter on my Instagram page and also with a community post here on YouTube, which I know I've been lacking on using, um, but I'll be sure to get back on that here for 2023. So with that being said, that is the end of the video. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.